for the viewers, I've decided to take this SPI and then um, smart metal apart. I've carefully popped out the lead seal, so there's a flat screwdriver. Right in the corner, I just popped them out. They were hollow little uh, custom made lead seals. They're um, pretty much what clips or power points have here, those little plastic caps. They have the same shape as that, but made of lead. They're not a solid slug, they just fit into the plastic, they're custom made for that purpose, so I was able to easily pull them out. The battery clip's going to come off. Yeah, got to be a two hand job, I think. It's going to have to be a two hand job. I get the tripod set up. Okay. Right. Yeah, back shit, you're gonna put this clip up. Huh, junk of a thing. The whole thing's going apart now. Fiddly. And there's a battery. Hey, for the 12th thousand six. And this little circuit board is just protection circuitry. The MOSFET for charging. 41st week 2008. You can see in the bottom there. 4108. Saft brand battery. Do not recharge. Okay, it's not a not a rechargeable lithium. Okay, so it's it's a non-rechargeable lithium, but it has control circuitry on it to protect the battery. Interesting. 31st of the 12th, 2006 on the circuit board. The date where are we here? There you go. The date on the circuit board. 2006. Yeah, camera won't look at it very close. I've got to get a good buddy camera with a macro lens, I think, like Ed uses. That's off. Another button there is T. Test mode. Grid something con board. Can, there you go. This is a communications board, it says here. That's a button I couldn't get when it was together, so. But won't destroy it. I want to. Make it so I can put it back together and use that test mode, see what it does. Try and see what this error writes this error all the time. This thing here is the, the um, communications part. There's a coax that goes into the antenna on the outside there. Pretty soon this sort of technology is going to be in all those smart appliances and they can be able to track you, what you're doing and what energy you're using and all that. Okay. Oh, nice heatsink. That is a nice heatsink. So that's the main amp amp amplification, I think. Now, must use a pretty beefy, beefy amplified um, uh, GSM system in this thing with a heatsink like that. It'd be transmitted with a fair bit of power, but we'll go on by the looks of that. We've got good quality niche con capacitors. And we've got some. What? Ne uh, Nippon Chemicons there. Eh? I might brand with this, that's a good brand. We've got a nice, nicely made um, power supply transformer, switch mode transformer. With a nice gap up the top there, like I want a tiny primary in that running off a of ZVS. How cool is that? Rectifier, little opto couplers made by Sharp. Pull the bottom part out, see what sort of um, this is current transformers or not. There's another circuit board down here, and we've got some LOVs and stuff on it. And carefully unplug this communications board. There you go. Unplug that coax cable. Look how tiny that thing is. MACID, yeah, it's a Wi-Fi type system. And there's the brains. The Taiwanese made chip. There must be the brains there for this um, meter. Little test connector there for something. No shielding on that. But under that heat sink would be like a, um, a GSM modem, a little chip on there. And that amplifies the signal with such power, and there's a heat sink that big. Bloody hell. The latest and guy here, 50 smart meters aren't even that powerful. So this thing might nuke someone's brains out. I watched the uh, recently watched the Take Back Your Power documentary. It's pretty interesting. It's worthwhile watching, actually. I'm going to try and pull this off. I've also confirmed the um, EDMI Mark III's do have a bad power supply problem. Some capacitors tend to dry out and the diodes in there, the rectifiers go bang. Got a boost relay and a, I think that big one there might be a disconnect relay. Yeah, that would be a disconnect relay. Look at the size of those wires. 
big bits of copper. That's amazing. It's a plot that turns your house off. So the utility company will send a thing to this meter and touch computer to turn this relay off and disconnect your house if you're doing something stupid or using your power up in a way that you're not supposed to. And there's the antenna in there. I'll get to that in a minute. And there's our boost relay. Little one there. I'll get this little antenna off. Definitely a Wi-Fi antenna by the shape of this thing. That's just stuck on. Well, there's no um, electrical connection to this. Uh, there's no electrical connection to this from what I can see. But it does connect here somewhere to this out of it. So a little bit of um, film stripped going to that to connect to this on the outside. And there's that little uh, Wi-Fi antenna in there. Two big relays. MOV's in there. It should go on to the power supply, to this circuit board of the meter. So this thing has got surge protection. On the other side of that board, no surface mount devices. It's all on the top. Caution, AC hot, obviously it's going to be live. It's a little bit different than the other, than the other smart meters that pulled apart. Very well made. What are they? One, two, three, four. Yeah, all those are all 105 degrees Celsius rated. So they're rated for the Australian um, summer. Let me give you uh, I've got to get a bloody um, USB microscope half this sort of thing. To do some good detailed teardown vids on these bloody things. There you go, look at those little SMDs. So this is the brains of the smart meter. This is a power supply half, and all that just to run the meter itself, and this is the brains. They communicate and send things to the um, smart grid. This sort of technology is being put in all appliances being sold today. Smart appliances communi communicate with a smart meter to form a smart grid to, to track and monitor your everyday energy usage habits, everything about you. So they're doing the Google syndrome. Relativity and chip. NEC Japan chip. Little botch wires in there. So tiny. Revision A. Little botch wire in there going here. Little button here. I'm going to put this back together and power it up and see what these buttons do. It's going to do something. And I will have the camera on these um, infrared LEDs because when I press the test button, it does um, transmit something. Interesting to uh, have a good um, infrared uh, receiver for that in the computer so to decipher what it's doing. And I've got a little um, magnetic switch here too. If you wave a magnet past that wafer switch in that tube, it will turn something on and close the circuit. So some sort of sensor. It is too. It's a, it's a leaf switch. I have to find a magnet to wave past. Let's see if that does nothing. That's interesting. I do like this label. I just I just noticed. Unplug it. Safety first. I'm gonna leave this label on here. I like that. Unplug it. Safety first. Let's power this thing up. Powering up. Error. Test mode. Oh, well, there it is, alright. Everything says it's okay. Well, that's doing something. It's got a little flashing lights on here, so it's communicating something. It's communicating something. If I look at these lights. Not dark enough for the camera to pick up, but it's communicating something there. Intel, Intel on. Yeah, it's communicating something. The blue button do. Something turned off. There's lights here flashing too. I wonder what I was doing. I shut the door. Might be able to see things a bit better. But it's still in test mode. Oh, power. Okay, get a magnet for this switch. So I turn it off, see if I can get it to reset. It's 
Nu måske jeg se her. Ja. Be careful with static and high voltage. Could be any... Um, just in case, the high voltage is down there, but just be precautious and use the back of a insulated screwdriver for safety. When pressing buttons in live equipment. No, it's going to be a magnet. I can't see to bump it. Doesn't do anything. Test. Yeah, but it sits there and does nothing and stays in test mode. So I get a magnet. Well, I'm going to have a powerful enough magnet. I reckon this one will do. Alright, let's see. That one here. Oh. You hear it? Oh, it's counting on the screen. Every time I do that, it's, it's counting something. It counts up on the screen when I wave the magnet past it. Careful though, again, you watch the screen there. Oh, it's doing something. And it's transmitting something there. Interesting. I found a technician's wand where you wave it. Over. Very interesting. There we are. Let's reset it and do it again. Glare on the screen, unfortunately. I've got it reset in the error mode. No. It says no. Smart meter says no. But I cleared the error. Now it says CA. Hmm, I wonder if that fixed it. I seen how I've cleared the error. What have I done there? I think I just transmitted something. You can see the infrared light flash for briefly there. On the camera. It's communicating something, but... Don't know what. Well, you set. See if it does in the um, error mode again. Yeah, error again. Yeah, there's something seriously wrong somewhere. And it's not happy. Yeah, it's not happy at all. It says error. I'll do that reset again. But that little um, wafer switch is interesting. Different menu items. Okay. 238.5 volts. Hidden features in a meter. Ah, let's get to all the features in a meter. I do it when it covers back on. Battery back in. See if we'll say nothing different now. Well, that's on the see if the magnet's strong enough. Yep. Over the top. Very interesting stuff. There you go. A relay arm. Might have to hold it if it lets me do anything. I'll hold it down. No, nah, still got the air on the message on, on the screen there. It says no. It says no. Smart meter says no, okay. There is something wrong with it. Whatever I'm doing, it's ignoring the error. Then it goes back to it. Reset, there you are. 2009, that's when SPOs and that put in service for themselves. I guess that's what that symbol there means, where you wave your magnet over. 2006 it was made there, there you go. 
case that's what it would normally do. If it, were, if it was working normally, it would have this on the screen and be doing that every day. 3.6 kilowatt hours on the clock. Find it on 3.6 kilowatt hours. Not on that one. There you go, this thing's only done 3.6 kilowatt hours and it stopped working properly. Hey, not so smart man now, is it? Anyway, that'll be enough for now. Thanks for watching. There you go, transmit stuff again. Back to error mode.